Hello everyone, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome back to another Kaiserreich Progress Report. Well, technically a Minor Monday. Today we're going to be looking at Minor Monday 22, the Shanghai Uprising, which is an important event that happens between the, the warlord fighting in China of the 1920s and the start of the Kaiserreich game in 1936. Uh, so the, the Shanghai Conference happened in uh, 1928, and there's been about four years of peace. Um... So we talked earlier about, uh, well, first off, let's take a look here at the legation cities. Uh, by the way, I have no, I do not take any of this as being a final map. This is just some teaser stuff that they've put out. But uh, we have the legation cities here, and it seems that a pseudo accord has been reached between Germany and Japan in terms of uh, the influence in China. But the only thing is, instead of shooting each other, now it's become a war of espionage, uh, similar to the one the, the Japanese and Germans were already waging during the 1920s. Um, but let's actually talk about Shanghai, which is a, a legation city now. So uh, this, this obviously does not have it as a legation city, but I'm just zooming in on it. So Shanghai uh, is the spiritual home of the Chinese left movement. Uh, so you remember that there were leftists that were in the KMT uh, when they came south. Uh, and when the Northern Expedition was happening in 1926, there was a hope that, they, that they'd that they be able to get close enough to Shanghai that there could then be an uprising and members of the Chinese left would be able to take the city. Now, the, the Chinese left that is in Shanghai is collectively referred to as Shanghai Syndicalists, uh, which is not really uh, a proper term for them because it actually is a, a catch-all term for the syndicalists and the anarchists and the social democrats and the radical socialists that are all within the city and they can hardly agree on anything. Uh, now, this yellow here uh, on this map, the, which, which, which is the League of Eight Provinces, you may remember is under the control of Sun Chuan Feng, uh, who throughout the late 20s and early 30s begins to agree to increasingly German friendly exploitative deals in order to maintain his autonomy from the Qing in blue. Um, and it's allowing Germany to get a much bigger foothold in China than the rest of the nations such as the United States who are part of the legation cities. Uh, however the Germans are not only working with Sun, but also several of his subordinates, which we sort of have a, a blurry picture of here. These are some cliques that could break away from the, the eight provinces, but he has generals underneath him, uh, different governors. I don't think this is an up-to-date list, but you know these are the eight provinces, and so you can see the, the different people who are in charge of that. Anyway, oh yeah, this, so this is Shanghai in the 30s, and uh, this is the Northern Expedition. You see how I was saying they were aiming towards Shanghai. That was a longer-term goal. Anyway, so he is, um, he's working, dang it, so many pictures, I'm trying to find the right one. Which one is it? There we go, there we go. So the Germans are also working with his governors. Um, now, corruption begins to become extremely commonplace in China because you have all these uh, warlords who are getting fat and rich off of working with the, the Germans. And the KMT that was still existing in southern China, they start to reorganize. They start to dig up their old rifles and things like that. And uh, start to prepare for another attempt at the revolution. And they not only they begin uh, creating command structures and reestablishing those, but they're also training a new generation of uh, soldiers in the countryside as well as in the cities. And so... Uh, after a time of training, and because of the corruption in Sun Chuan Feng's uh, League of Eight Provinces is uh, reaching a high, they figured that this is the time for an uprising. So the uprising happens in the middle of 1932. Um, let's uh, let's come and go over here and get to this picture of Shanghai. And it's mostly centered in Shanghai and around it, although it's also happening in other southern Chinese cities such as Wuhan, Nanjing, and uh, coastal ones as well. So the problem is that, uh, you know, again, as we can see here, there is the League of Eight Provinces and there's the Legation Cities. The the, mem the armies of the League of Eight Provinces, really the armies of any Chinese uh, clique or nation, whatever you want to call them, are not permitted to go into these neutral zones around the coastal cities. Uh, so 
Sun Sun Chuang Bang, who's uh who owns these areas, he's not able to send his troops in to suppress uh, the uprising in Shanghai. Because uh, it would violate the treaties. So, this is advantageous to the Shanghai syndicalists who can attack out into the, le uh, the legation, uh, the legation, into the League of Eight Provinces, and then retreat into the neutral zone, and then the League of Eight Provinces forces are not allowed to follow. So Germany, uh, they then have German officers take control of League of Eight Provinces troops, and by claiming that these are actually German troops, uh, in quotation marks, uh, they then violently cr enter uh, Shanghai and crush the rebellion. There are stories about syndicalists being thrown alive into locomotive fireboxes and uh, things like that. So the Shanghai uprising is crushed. However, um, this was not a lopsided victory and there are consequences and repercussions for this. For example, this was very controversial even within the League, uh, the, you know, putting down this uprising with the aid of the Germans and things like that. So, uh, for example, Lu Xiangting, who is the governor of Zhejiang, refuses to fight the rebels, and so do other governors, most notably Chen Tiaoyuan. Uh, so Sun Cheng Chuang Feng, he removes Governor Lu, the first guy who refused to fight, from office. But he does not remove Chen Tiao Yuan because his capital is very close to Wuhan in the Qing. So he feels that if he tries to pressure the general too much, that uh, Chen Tiao Yuan will then turn to Wu Pie Fu and the Qing for protection. So he's going to lose that section of China. In addition to these internal problems that the League of Eight Provinces is having, it's also showing that despite the defeat of the KMT during the uh, the Northern Expedition, that leftism ideology still exists in China, and there are still people who survived from the Shanghai Uprising, and they flee to the mountains in uh, Fujian to continue the struggle. Now, some observed, why didn't Wu Piefu take advantage of all this and come down here and try to defeat uh, Sun Chuan, you know, take him from the west while he's dealing with things in the east and the south? Well, it, it basically shows that the even though his is officially the legitimate government, he does not actually have. He's not actually that strong. He's got his own internal competition to deal with, as well as the uh, the Feng Tian to the north and the Jianji to the west, um, who he sees as enough of a threat that he stays in the North China Plain and does not intervene during the Shanghai Uprising, which is going to have some long-term consequences. All right, so that's a lot of info for a Miter Monday. Uh, let's check out what the top Reddit comment is. I've been forgetting to do this. I forgot to do it last time. Top comment for this progress report on the Shanghai Uprising is by Napoleon with AMG, who says, Happy New Year, you, period, you. May the new year bring new maymays from new memers, period, period, period. The old ones kind of left and there is a void remaining behind them, period, period, period. So there you have it, Minor Monday 22, the Shanghai Uprising. I hope you've been enjoying these, uh, and I'll see you in the next video, which I think is gonna be a progress report. Subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll be notified and keep up with all this lore, and uh, click the bell uh, so you know, you know when those videos go up. I'm Conquering History Games, and I'll see you then, bye.